Hi everyone. I wanted to give you a quick video to go over all of the week three assignments. So there's only one tutorial this week, homework 1-7, and you're not doing anything on Galaxy, you're just reading a journal article to understand this process that we're going through in our fast Q to fast a uh, project. We are trying to do variant calling, and I think that this journal article will give you some background to understand the statistics behind making a decision if something is experimental error or a true variant. Then you're going to do the rest of these steps. Galaxy to learn how to actually call the variant and make changes to it manually. So I've put together a couple slides just to go through an overview of all these steps because they're really part of the same workflow. Last week, we played around a little bit with the trimming tool for one of the homework assignments. This week, you're going to use the Trimomatic tool and the filter tool to try to get the best quality information before you map the raw data to the reference genome. Once you've mapped the data, you produce BAM and BAI alignment files. Those are the things that you can view in IGV. Then you're going to be able to run the naive variant caller to make a spreadsheet list of all the variants in the genome. And then last but not least, next week, we'll use an application to turn that BCF file into a modified .fasta file that has the basis changed for every variant that was observed. So let's talk a little bit about trimming versus filtering. So I used this analogy last week in talking to some of you on Zoom. When you're trimming, think scissors. You're shortening the read, you're cutting off bases at the end that are low quality hair. When you're filtering, think clippers. You're taking it out at the root. You're pulling out all four lines of data that make up each read in a FASTQ file, and you're deleting all four lines. So there's actually fewer reads in the file after filtering. What does this look like when we open the FASTQ file? For trimming, we're just cutting off the edge. So you see that after a certain point, after all those capital letter qualities, we start to get into the lower quality, things like end parenthesis or four or five or asterisk. Those characters mean that there's low quality data and we just cut off all those bases, but we don't get rid of those four lines in the file. On the right-hand side, you see a read that actually has no information. So all of the bases called were ends and all of the quality was as low as it gets, a number sign. So we wanna get rid of that whole read it's junk. Um, the index read worked for that spot on the flow cell, but we got no real data from that. When you run Trimomatic, all of the times we run Trimomatic, we wanna run the data as paired end reads. The only data we wanna keep are the trimmed files that were paired. Um, there'll be files from Trimomatic that represent unpaired reads, but we wanna leave those out of our analysis. The sliding window represents how many base qualities you average together. And then the average quality required is at what point do you throw bases out if their average is below this number. So 4 and 28 were what I used in my example history. With filtering, we're going to pull both files in and filter them with the same conditions. A good filter is to look for things that are minimum size. When we did this experiment, the Illumina kit that we used read 250 bases in each direction. So if reads are really small, if it, they're shorter than 50 bases, shorter than 20 bases, we want to get rid of those. We can also filter on quality. So if there are more than 10 bases with a quality lower than 20, with the settings that I've put here, that whole read, all four lines, would get kicked out of the file. And the reason we do this is we want the highest quality snippets of DNA, the highest quality pieces, before we do the assembly, before we run the mapping tool. We're trying to take these unordered sequence segments, find the small little overlaps, and put together a genome. You can imagine that this is similar to if you went to a building that had just closed because there was some kind of financial investigation and the dumpster was full of shredded financial documents that could put the owners in jail, 
you're the detective trying to put everything together, you gotta take scotch tape and find where the little pieces of shredded documents line up and tape them together. That is what BWMM is doing behind the scenes to put together an entire genome. When we align with BWMM, we're gonna start by just using the defaults. We wanna use a genome from the history to make sure that it's matching our data. Um, the default genome is the honeybee. And then we wanna make sure that we select paired end reads and select R1 file for R1 and R2 file for the read two. For project step one six, I want you to vary the reference genome. So you can do this by going to this website, nih.gov genome browse prokaryotes. This is the homepage for bacillus coagulans. And when I go here, I see many different 42 genomes that exist for this species. I'm only interested in the ones that are complete. So when I mouse over that circle, you see it looks like a, a full moon rather than a half moon. If I find a complete reference, I can select any of these complete references and I can click on the assembly link. I can click download assembly to get a compressed version of the genome, or I can scroll down and I can go to the RefSeq sequence for the genome, look at the FASTA file, and use the send to button to get to my computer as a FASTA formatted genome. Once it's downloaded, I'll then upload that reference to Galaxy, rerun the alignment with a new genome to complete the assignment. After you've done the alignments tools, you're going to vary the aligner um, for the project once um, one six assignment, and then you're going to compare which reference genome, which alignment settings, which alignment tool give you the best alignment, give you the best BAM file. This is very similar to when we ran FastQC. We were looking for which trim settings, which filter settings gave us the best fast Q files. Now we're using SAM tool stats to see which BAM files are the best based on the alignment settings that we use. So pick the best alignment that has the highest percentage of properly prepared reads. Once you have picked that alignment, you can view it in IGV using the reference genome file from homework one underscore six. Um, it's the same file that you guys have all uploaded. When you zoom to a region where it matches the reference, you'll see that the entire field is gray. That means that all of the bases in that region are not variants. When you run into a variant, you'll see a color appear. And one of the ways that you can call variants is just use IGV. Um, so if you have a small region that you're looking at, if you're just looking at a single gene rather than a whole genome, um, this is a perfectly fine way to decide which letters in a sample are variants. Because our genome is over three and a half million bases, IGV isn't a good way for us to do this. And that's where the naive variant color comes in. So you've aligned your FASTQ files to a reference genome to produce the BAM alignment. Now we can use the BAM alignment with the reference genome to find out where the aligned reads differ from the reference. And then you can export a spreadsheet, make a variant call file, which you can open in a spreadsheet, like a program like Excel, that will tell us what are the differences between my genome in my experimental sample and the lab strain of this species that's found on NCBI. You set up the variant calling to compare these two. Um, you have to make sure that you're using a reference source from the history, just like with BWMM. And each student in the class is assigned a different region. So you wanna make sure that you limit your search to your chromosome and your base positions. Once you've done that, 
you can um, start by just running it with the defaults. And then you'll run the variant color several times with different minimum number of reads, different minimum base quality. But you always want to set the ploidy to one since it's a bacterial genome. And you also always want to only write out alternative, alternate alleles. Um, so that's this checkbox right here. Set it to yes so that your files are much smaller. You don't have to delete all of these rows where the reference and the data, the raw data, match each other. When you repeat the runs, you probably want to make the filter a little bit stricter, require a higher number than zero of minimum number of reads to consider a reference alternate, require a minimum base quality for each base call that is in your BAM file so that it can't be a variant based on bad data, it has to be a variant based on high quality data. Just as there's base quality, there's also mapping quality. So when BWA finds a home for each read, it gives a score for how sure it is that that's the correct position in the genome. So all of these things are good factors to increase, to decrease the number of rows in your variant call file. Once you have a small number, here I have only three variants that were identified by naive variant caller, you're going to want to manually open up that file in Excel and get rid of any rows that are not single nucleotide polymorphisms. And you're also going to want to add two rows to take this information that's in a hard to read format and make it a little easier to read. AC stands for allele count, AF stands for allele frequency, and so you're going to add those columns in Excel. How do you do that? Well, the easiest way to do it, let me stop my, um, stop my share for a second and change it so I'm sharing my whole screen, will be to go to Downloads, get the file, that represents the variant call file. It often shows up as a V calendar file and change its name, change its file type to be .tsv. TSV stands for tab separated variable and that's how the data is stored in a variant call file. Once you've made the change, you can open up a spreadsheet program. So I'm gonna open up Excel and I can open this up in Excel and I can use the wizard to separate the data into columns. Each column is separated by a tab. Once the data is on my computer, I now can look at it and make changes to it. So to delete the one row where there's an insertion The variant in the BAM file, and the advantage of reads are the variant call. For the first row, it's 35.4 per second. It's 5.7C, the quality of the of reads that called this variant. So that's the big picture of what you're doing this week in our FASTQ to FASTA project. Let me know if you have any questions.